Trip Block. Trip Block. Trip is undoubtedly is Lee County's number one sports fan. Or Lee County's number one sports fan. Lee County's number one sports fan. I'm Trip Block and I'm Lee County's number one sports fan. Well, the thing about Trip is he's he's serves as really a, a motivation for our team. It's been that way for for uh, uh, the entire time I've been here. You know, he's our number one fan. Uh, he's at a lot of practices. He's at all the games. Uh, you know, and when our kids see Trip and our, our players see Trip and our coaches, when, when they see him, you, you know, it really serves as a motivating factor for us because of everything that he's overcome and the positive outlook he has on life um, and everything else. And to see the passion he's got for Lee County High School, um, it, it really, when you, when you see that, it's, it, it really serves when you, when you look at everything he overcomes a motivating factor for us and, and our team and our school. Like I said, he's, he's like a brother to me, but I first got inspired by Tripp just seeing his passion, um, love for, for sports in general. I mean, big baseball, big football, but seeing his enthusiasm and faith and belief and, and fight. If you could have every one of your players on your team to have the heart and the belief that Tripp's got, you never lose a game. Psalms 139, 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts, you made me in the ghetto, in my mother's womb. I pray to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it well. I was born 29 years ago with a gift spirit gift called Spina Bifida. It is a nerve damage to the spinal cord during first early weeks of pregnancy. We knew when I was um, about 20 weeks pregnant, they had told us that Tripp's head measured smaller than his body. And so we had another ultrasound at 30 weeks and they found fluid on his brain. I was born here at Phoebe Putney and transported to Atlanta Scottish White Hospital. We actually were not aware of spina bifida at all until he was born. Um, my heart sunk a little bit initially find when we, you know, when we first found out and saw it, but wasn't, I didn't know exactly what it was to, you know, know, to be concerned, to, I don't know how concerned to be. I spent the first three weeks of my life in, in ICU. I was finally sent home with oxygen and lots of monitors. And then when he was seven months old, we found out that he had Arnold Chiari malformation, which affects the total nervous system, um, swallowing everything. To correct it, they would have, they would need to perform surgery on my neck to relieve Impressive on my own brain still. At nine months old, he had a tube inserted for feeding, and he still, today at 29, still has a feeding tube. Doctors told my parents that my life expectancy would be around 16 years old. We knew um, when he was born and he had the spina bifida um, that we were going to be up against some challenges. The reality of it set in and we were just able to uh, adjust to the you know, way of life that it was going to be for us. As far as difficulties, how we have, you learn to adjust when there's a disability. You do a lot of research, you do a lot, you lot figure out a lot on your own. Um, we still have issues, there's still things that happen, you know, that we have to overcome. Um, but we do it and make the best of it. He was five or six when I finally realized we can't, we have to have, you know, he's gotta be able to get around. He can't be pushed around the stroller forever. Um, again, the day the wheelchair came, it was a very devastating day for me too. Me and his mother, you know, we were big Braves fans at the times and, and loved football. And and uh, just Braves were very good back then and when he was born and he just kind of grew up with us enjoying it with us. Um, when Tripp was born and I said earlier he was headed to Scottish Rite 
into the NICU unit there. They had a radio at the top of his little section that he was in, and the Braves were playing nonstop. Uh, the nurses were Braves fanatics. I really believe that's where his love for the game came from, was hearing those noises, along with all the other beeping, was to hear. And I can't even remember the announcer of the Braves at the time, but we would go in and that was what you would hear, would be the Atlanta Braves game. What made you want to get into baseball? That's the love and you know, passion for it. And being around it for all those years before. This one is playing with my friends. But at school, um, kids always got flyers for football, baseball, you know, rec department stuff. And he would come home and he'd, you know, well, I would take it out of his little folder and I'd ball it up because I didn't think he'd ever, you know. And um, he always just kept saying, I want to play baseball. I just want to play baseball. So my neighbor, our neighbor across the street, their son um, was a couple, about a year older than Tripp. And um, he came over the day and said he'd signed up for baseball. And Tripp wanted to know why he couldn't sign up. I thought that I was protecting him so he wouldn't be bullied or actually I was afraid of being told, no, your son can't play, you know. When uh, he wanted to play baseball, I was probably more worried, it was probably my pride more than his, worried about me, you know, being embarrassed. So Caleb's mom, Stacy, and I made a phone call to a friend of mine from where we're from Camilla. And he's like, it's no problem at all. We'll get him on the team. They called us on Sunday night and said, be at practice at six. And I didn't even go to practice because I didn't know how he would be treated. And he got out there and he played and he gave his heart and he enjoyed it. And just, and that's all you can ask for in any kid. I mean, they, included him just like he was, you know. I don't see, this never held me back from anything. And to, to this day, I don't, I'm a fighter. Just because I'm in the race, it doesn't, doesn't mean I don't can't play sports. I couldn't play ball in high school because of the rules. And Deanna, Julian came up, came to me asked me if I wanted to try doing something for me, for myself. I was like, yeah, let's try it. And after that, I fell in love with it. When I first met Tripp, um, I was an assistant coach with our um, track team here at the high school. And um, he came to participate in track through shot put um, and did the 400 meter race. Some of my favorite moments of being on the track team is going to state two times and getting the top four fan. Man, it's just his whole spirit and his determination just to overcome that was just infectious to everybody. So you get an opportunity, you see a kid, you might think that because of his disability, it will weigh him down or discourage him. Not with Trip. Trip was the complete opposite. It was because of my disability, I will do, I can do. I've heard Trip Block, Trip Block, you know, biggest fan and stuff. Well, I got to meet the biggest fan. So I went over there and kind of introduced myself and we started hanging out and doing stuff on the on outside from the school and stuff and just, I just fell in love with it. Trip is normally a calm in a storm for me. Um, he and I, we have a really good relationship just outside of athletics. So, you know, sometimes he, he senses when I'm going through things, I might get a text hey brother, what's going on? Or he might call me in random times in the middle of the night and we just talk about whatever. Um, so he's just, he, he he's very, I don't know, man. I just love the guy, you know? It's, it's hard to really put in words what Trip means to me. It means a whole lot. I really appreciate him and I really appreciate his purpose in my life. 
he barely misses anything. As long as he's got a ride, he's gonna be at, no matter if it's baseball, football, cheerleading, volleyball, trips coming. He's plugged into everything. And he truly is a guy that re bleeds Lee County red and black. We were in Coffee County, I look up, he's in the locker room with us. So if it's anything involved in Lee County, athletics, trip block, is definitely a fan of it. He had called me and asked me, you know, if, if I'm driving to the game. And sometimes I wouldn't even be driving. I'm like, yeah, I'll drive. And so, I, you know, I asked Coach if I can drive and load him up and we, and we ride, man. It's just, he wants to be there. 2017, state championship. After winning, it was, it was like he came to me and I picked up his wheelchair and I was just holding him and he gave me like the biggest hug ever. And it was just like in that moment, everything that we had gone through as coaches and as fans, and it just, just seems to go away. And so when he came up, you know, out of everybody in the stadium, he came up to me and when I picked him up and he hugged me, that was just like a genuine moment, like I, I'll never forget. Magwood gonna take it, calling his own number, left side, got plenty of running room over there. Magwood, first down and more. Magwood streaking down the far sideline. He dives for the pylon, and he'll get there on a 36-yard touchdown run. Go begins the off, started doing push-ups in the end zone and after every score. During big games, he's many a times he's come out and said, okay, I'm doing push-ups today. Yeah, he, you know, he, he started feeling himself a little bit, so he was working out and and so as the football team would score, Tripp would go and he would do push-ups. So it just kind of caught on, because he started doing it, and Chili just started doing it, and you see fans and everybody, you know, trying to do the push-ups as well. So that was always kind of like a, kind of like a good thing to, uh, just for him, because he's always wanted to feel like he was connected to whatever was going on. And so that was his, that was his contribution to the game. You score, I do the push-ups. And just, uh see the fans turn from their attention to the to the football game to trip just lets you know hey no that that matters trip has when he was when he couldn't go into the dugout with the baseball team we had some parents that got together and i didn't even know what they did it without us knowing and built him a box it's a wheelchair ramp that goes up. It sits right beside the dugout at the baseball field, and it is reserved for Tripp. Um, he'll have some friends set up there with him, but that was the closest he could get into the dugout. Um, but they, he would get up there, and at our, at our backstop, there's a high brick wall, and it's hard for Tripp to see. People would you know, try to move him so he could see, but he had to do his neck like this just to really see what was going on. And several of the parents and uh, the coaches were just talking one night and really just picking on Tripp about he could, you, you can't see his stuff, you can have to pay better admission. And they was like, well, let's, let's build him a platform. Let's get him where we got a, a, a place for Tripp where he can come up and see. And that's where it all came from. And then everybody just come in one day and build it. Well, he likes, uh... Like you said, he likes to go hunting, he likes to go, he likes fishing, go to the beach, you know, he has his track chair and he takes it um, hunting with us and he, and he can get out and totally independent and go wherever he wants to go. Uh, when we first got that chair, it was the first time he was able to uh, go down to the beach and just love that. And, um, you know, he, he it's just a whole other world that, he's, that he is uh, open to now. When you see someone that, that's overcome what he's overcome, to be as positive as he is every day, uh, it, it motivates you, it motivates me, uh, it motivates our team. You know, when you see a guy like that and what he does, it, it humbles you and uh, it, it serves as a, uh, a beacon of, of uh, really uh, courageousness for our team to follow. He's an inspiration to his own mom. He just doesn't have a bad, he doesn't, he's not a downer. He's very positive. Um, if something bad happens, he's going to find something positive in it. Um, you know, if I have doubts and he's like, really? You know, um, Facebook, um, different things, you know, he's just, he 
just incur he's an encourager, you know, because he could. He could lay down and just wallow, but he doesn't do that. And so when you look at Tripp, you know, you look at his disability, and it would be discouraging for some, you know, and a lot of people, the doubt will creep in your mind that I can't do, but you look at Tripp and he, he tries to get, his, get himself up, try to do the walker, try to do the push-ups, try to, you know, maintain a job, still want to be plugged in socially with everything that's going on um, with athletics, still want to be involved, man. It's just, if he can do it, why can't I? I mean, he's changed my life in many ways. You know, just seeing someone with his, his disabilities not be hindered, not, it doesn't matter. Cause he, he, he'll get out there and do whatever anybody else will do, he'll try. Um, but he, he don't say no, he don't let, don't let his disability stop him. And that right there inside itself gives me the, the chance of, okay, well, this is what I'm fighting today, but I can get through it. If Tripp can do what he's done in life, I can get through it. God has been a blessing for me. He's, he's helped me through a lot to get where I'm at today. Seven months away from my turning 30. And doctors told my mom and dad I wasn't there by 16. Here I am, fixing turn 30. I don't think, I don't think life is granted. I don't, I don't see this as a discipline. I see this as I don't pity myself. I don't, I go around with a smile on my face. And I don't get sick, I don't get down with myself.